welcome back into part two of trying to actually do the head gasket job on the Honda Civic because I replaced the windshield wipers, which is my personal curse. <laughs> um, there's already Honda motor bud all over the floor there. The cylinder head was down there and now it is over on the messy bench. This surface late in the day here is already the pistons well those two are cleaned up i still have to rotate the motor but most of that is all cleaned up and i just have to actually rotate that motor up and make sure that uh, i clean those two little pistons there to equal that out that's good to go and then there's the cylinder head which i am cleaning up everything as much as possible even the little crevices which it's like the little things that people don't see but whatever it's not a hundred percent or anything it's not like if i were to take it to a machine shop and have them you know clean it with their nice cylinder head parts washer but it is pretty good for what i'm trying to get done and out over the weekend so i don't have much to go on this but i do want to replace the valve stem seals because that does come in the pack so I'm going to end up doing that real shortly, but I want to get the torque specs for everything on the camshafts here to make sure that they don't, um, they're not too tight when they start squeezing again. So I've gotten everything pretty much um, laid out here and this is what uh, it takes to take off the head gasket or get to the head gasket on the Honda Civic, which isn't bad at all. I pretty much sourced out just about every part that's in that pack without even opening it and figuring out where everything is which just like i said before about the pre-warning don't take everything apart because it will leave you a little bit stranded and going to the parts store randomly because of the fact that there's other parts that weren't included in the set that's okay though because i already knew about that and now you do too so i'm going to do a lot more cleaning and get this more more prepped for getting this back together and I'm gonna get the valve seals back on there or the valve stem seals and go from there all right now for the first time I get to actually open this and go for the first parts on the rebuild because over on be careful when you're cutting this not to cut your new gaskets my goodness never done it but I've seen it done there's there's more plastic okay maybe wrong layer okay here we go now we're in there so what i'm going for is the vowel stems because seals if you start your car and for some odd reason it starts to smoke but then it goes away or maybe you have the symptom of you just let it sit in idle for a little bit and then as soon as you hit the gas it has a bunch of well blue smoke coming out of it more than likely it is these little valve stem seals I have the first one taken apart here this is the top cap which the little half keepers in here, the valve keepers, I have the two right there, just setting already off. And when you go right below this spring right here, there is your valve stem seal. Beautiful. So now I get to repeat and replace a, well, every single one of these. So I'm going to do that every single time, replace this and put the new one on because we definitely don't want anything old hanging around, especially on this deep of a rebuild. So yeah, that is uh, what's going on. Uh, All right, in the middle of doing the cylinder head, that right there is the aftermath of grinding one valve on the right versus not grinding it on the left. So there's a, a lot more seat area for that so that's gonna make a difference on the valve clearance but once you get the valve clearance adjusted and that actually cleaned up it, it should be very beneficial just heads up side note try not to work over a trash can you may lose like small pieces that are very important to you know your your motor running so just keep that in mind all right i have been playing flapjack with this beautiful cylinder head here because all all of the exhaust valves are now all out in a line and over here looking pretty darn good for the most part but minus all the extra stuff really down in here which is what i wanted to show you because of the fact that there is so much crap and crud not so much on the bottom side as you might have seen before like I, I scraped some of that off of there but on the top side of the valves 
there's a lot going on there and to compare it I actually cleaned that one with uh, a little bit of sandpaper and going through it so this is a finished one you can see that finish and how much that went down versus the one next to it in the same cylinder as a matter of fact because these are all in order so those little pieces of metal are the actual valve keepers you have your valve stem seal and you have your spring and spring seat so or valve keeper i don't know something like that regardless these are all the valves i got them all out so then i can do them all in a line i'm going to put them in the drill over there and continue using sandpaper like this to get all that crap off of there so then i can lap the valves because i have this beautiful valve grinding compound if you can read that that does wonders and i can already see that this is going to perform better just on using that tube of crap alone so i'm going to continue cleaning up all these valves i'm going to continue valve grinding using the valve grinding compound or lapping my valves so then it seats a little bit better in there because if you can see it right now it's about to look different all of the holes are already cleaned out and looking a lot better and a lot less carbon filled so I'm gonna go ahead and keep cracking at this so I can hopefully get this in and out of here as soon as possible so here we go now that I have beaten the crap out of this sandpaper and really whipped these valves or the the top side of them into shape and I'm continue after all and the valve lapping is done this is what the valves the harder metal is looking like cleaned up on the actual orifice there where it actually you know seats and does not let it leak so I figured I'd make that a little bit bigger so there is less chance of it leaking or having to go back into the motor later after I've done all this damn work so this is what the valves look like now and that's exactly that shiny part is where it's going to seat now so instead of it being an extremely small area where it's going to seat and perform better because of the fact that it's sealing better so better compression more power no prayers needed so now that this is all done and get this all back together now it's time to get the the valve keepers or seats whatever you want to call those i'm pretty sure those are valve keepers is what you call those i'm going to come back and put all the valves in all the springs all the little seat things and then all these little clips here which is going to be the worst part because trying to deal with those little seats over top of a trash can is not exactly the smartest idea but that's what i'm doing today because well i don't have the room and i'm trying to get things done relatively quickly so here we go hopefully this goes smoothly so what i ended up doing was finding these little these are like really cheap but they're uh you know like plugs of some sort silicone or whatever so what i did was actually put that on the end of this here we go so i put that on top of the actual valve and then i spun that with the smallest socket that that would grab it which i think was a six millimeter and then i was actually able to get around these uh spark plug uh galley galley holes or galley ways because that wouldn't the galley ways were blocking my my drill so i went ahead and went with the other drill so then i could kind of grab it with that and then grab it onto that push it back and forth and the job got done all right and now that all oh, of the valve stem seals are all put back together and I only had to play Where's Waldo for four pieces. These, these little keepers love to jump out sometimes. So um, what I actually did to help that was the uh, Lucas um, engine assembly lube. Was It's a really sticky lubricator and it's okay in the motor, coincidentally. So I used that as a uh, sticky method to help get those uh, valve keepers to stay together and stay on the stem while I release the specialty tool sitting right there on the trash cans. The orange one is going to be your camshaft seal. And that camshaft seal is found in the kit. Well, if you have a similar kit to mine, these black ones are the um, spark plug seals. So in the valve cover, you can uh, actually replace those so then you don't have oil leaking down into the um, spark plugs or a spark plug area or galleyway whatever you want to call it this red seal or orange or burgundy or whatever color you want to call that it should be that same seal right there that's going to go on and that's going to be this goes towards the outside so keep keep that that's with the spring towards the inside and just fyi if you ever see an arrow like 
as such on your on your seal that's telling you which way the actual motor spins as you see that little arrow right there is going that way which is why if something were to be turning that way you could see the inside ridges are more against trying to keep oil in and not letting it slip through as if it was going backwards so just a little fyi if you're replacing that yourself and then i'm going to go ahead and actually start throwing the head back on here but not before cleaning those two cylinders out and in the youtube sec all of the pistons are now clear and the head gasket is now placed on top as well as that exhaust manifold gasket is now clean so moving on to the next step I don't know about every head gasket, but this one comes with a manufacture date, 2023-89. And in a blink of an eye, the head is now on, as well as torqued down, and all the valve clearances for the exhaust and intake are adjusted properly. So there you have it. That's already back on, and as always, continuing on. And now I have found the blue rings, which I thought were the intake rings. And I am correct because down here are those same intake rings that are popular for leaking within the actual intake because there's a plate that's blocking it. That plate also causes other issues. Remember to always have it cleaned out because that's not even done clean. As you can see, all the gunk that was in there and what is now all over my desktop so that that's pretty thick um pretty gunky stuff so it's like oil but make sure you clean all of that out of there before putting anything back together so if you're wondering if i actually got this done on monday like it was supposed to go out it 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 didn't happen um there's a couple reasons uh one being that parts aren't all here i i want a new timing belt and the tensioner as i think i showed you on the earlier side of the video it is completely gone there's no tension left in the tensioner so i think it's done its job and it's it's ready to retire that one's a goner so i wanted to just relax and kind of um rebuilding the intake and trying to clean out everything that is inside of there because it is it is just a gunky mess and that is a problem with um, these so I want to make sure that that's uh, nice and clear and crisp and clean I got that going on and as I wanted to get this out um, Monday is because uh, I wanted to actually look up under my uh, my Nissan Z and the Nissan the exhaust sounds funny sounds like something broken in the exhaust now so I've got to go up under there um, because I, I was originally going to go up under the, the Z for the exhaust to get rid of the rattle for the last time to actually be able to hear that puppy purr. But now there's something broken because I went into a construction zone and they didn't mark the fact that, you know, when you change pavement from old to new, there's a large heap. So uh, I pretty much jumped my car, not not upward, but downward, and that was enough for the, the exhaust to break somewhere. So I gotta figure out what is, is actually uh, loose up under there now. Regardless, um, I was gonna go up under there for that, but now I got the, the exhaust leak of some sort somewhere in there that I gotta figure out, but I, I can't work on it until this is out of here because I don't have space to the side and the driveway is a hill. I'm not trying to go out that way, so I'm going to wait until this is done. The parts should be in here really shortly for this. Then I can start snapping this all back together and, and doing a proper budget build or budget rebuild and try to get this uh, running well. I have high hopes that this rebuild is going to make this quite a snappy and primo motor, but we don't know until I actually get this done and running. So pray for power. Thank you for watching. I, I super appreciate it. And uh, I, I hope everyone has a beyond beautiful day. Have a good one.